China's influence in Africa is very controversial in Washington. Do you consider China's role in the continent a constructive one? And what could the United States do to play a more constructive role here as well? China's influence on Africa, viewed in certain ways in the context of the U.S., what could the U.S. do uh, to help Africa or Zambia as it were? Let me just step aside a little bit and say things must not be seen that way. Things must not be seen that way. I totally agree with the Vice President that uh, we're here to foster the U.S.-Zambia relationship. But there's a context in the sense that that relationship um, exists in the operating environment where other countries also exist. So, but the contextualization that if the U.S. and Zambia share a lot in common, strong bilateral relationship, historical relationship, then they are doing things against China. He's actually wrong, completely wrong. So I have said before, when I'm in Washington, I'm not against Beijing. Equally, when I'm in Beijing, I'm not against Washington. We have a globe we share. We have a planet we share, Earth. For us in Africa, we have our continent. It is easy to say when the president of Zambia is visiting Pretoria in South Africa, he's against Abuja and Nigeria. That's the logic. Not quite. What we expect of America and China as the two leading economies, number one, USA, number two, China, is to help us keep our world safe for everybody. Keep peace, stability, which would allow us to focus, for example, like us, on our economic reconstruction agenda. And by the way, as Zambia, to a large extent, we are responsible for the downgrade of our economy the way we transacted, the way we related with people. That's why we, since taking office, we have reset our relationship with the global community, the League of Nations. I'm talking about the civilized League of Nations. So essentially, for now, we're expecting the U.S., as we have done in our conversations, to support us on resolving this debt overhang, for which as a country, we're responsible. We didn't manage our affairs properly. We must accept that. Equally, we are asking, when we meet China, we are asking them to assist us resolve our debt burden and free resources to where they should go. Apply the free resources where they should go. So I am saying that the U.S. and us have our relationship they have their relationship with China. We have our relationship with the U.S., we have our relationship with China. But none of these relationships are about working against someone or a group of countries. I think that's what will keep our world safer, peaceful, secure. But let me be direct. I do believe that the U.S. and China are engaging almost daily because of who they are, these two big countries. And our request to them is to keep our world safe, peaceful, orderly. For us, we would like to advance our democratic relationship with the Americans and with others. I must say, and I said it yesterday, it's in public domain. We believe that a democratic framework will allow us to advance our agenda economically and social. We came from a one-party state, dictatorship. We didn't like it. It didn't work for us. So we want to stay this course. But we must not always see each other that when we meet with the vice president, then we are plotting against someone. We are not. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this is a serious matter whereby all Christians in Uganda and Muslims and all God believers, all, all believers in this country, we have to take serious interest in it. Madam Speaker, I want to draw attention to this parliament that we go to the book, the Bible, and we go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13. And allow me to read. Madam Speaker, it says, If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man... Honorable and members, please don't go. We have a very important vote to cast. Madam Speaker, I allow me to, to read again. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man and with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death for the guilt of a capital offense. That's the Bible quoting. Madam Speaker, I want to quote again. If you go to the book of Jude, chapter 7, it talks about the immorality, the immorality of Sodom and Gomorrah. When those cities were, were, were practicing homosexuality, God took a decision to destroy all those cities. Madam Speaker, the punishment which God put there was death. Not even 10 years, not even life imprisonment, it's only death. This parliament should take a decision that those people would be caught practicing homosexuality, be killed. I am the vice chair person of the Seventh Day Adventist Parliament Association and I am standing on behalf of the SDA church in this parliament. I, I beg to submit. Thank you, Anyakun. Thank you very much. Uh, I give the floor now to Honorable Akelo to Uganda. Two minutes and a half. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm the one who appointed Honorable Akelo and she said that I should uh, pass on her question because she's not here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, our concern as a Uganda is on the process which is always followed before making all these commitments. For example, human rights, because some of us, we do want our societies to be considered when you're defining some of these aspects. For example, in Uganda, issues of LGBT and homosexuality, I can tell you, and uh, abortion are issues that can never be accepted and we shall not pass laws which we shall be uh, around them. If people do want to be uh, homosexuals or what, we don't have a problem. Let them go and have their life. But promotion of that in our country can never be accepted. And then when I heard someone saying that these are human rights which you must be respected, they are universal. I just want to assure you, they can never, they can never. So what does it help? for you to sign an agreement, which we can never domesticate. If you went and talked to our ambassador, our minister, and you made resolutions, I'm the deputy speaker of parliament. I can assure you the parliament I, I lead will never pass laws that are going to be against our values. And I received one of the packs from Renew Europe, and they had written on values not for sale. African values can never be exchanged for European funding. That one can never. So I request that we define human rights so that we know the boundaries. Human rights, we don't involve issues of LGBT. We don't involve issues of abortion because that is on the core of the African culture and society. I thank you. Thank you very much, colleague. And now our last speaker in the list, it's uh, Honorable Kaltonga from Vanuatu. Two minutes and a half, please. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Whilst I thank the European Council for its statement on climate change of 24th October 2022 on acknowledging the parties should consider their obligations on human rights when taking action to address climate change. Uganda just passed a law that made homosexuality illegal and the many corrupt Western leaders and their allies are panicking. Our country, 
country, we will have our morals, we will protect our children. And we are making this law, we are making this law for ourselves, we are making this law for our children, we are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once it passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. Same-sex relations are already illegal in Uganda and over 30 other African countries. The new law would introduce steep sentences, life in prison for same-sex relations, and the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality, which according to the bill involves gay sex with people under 18 or when the perpetrator is HIV positive, among other categories. As you might have expected, the Western countries, led by America, are swiftly condemning this bill and are already dishing out the threats should Uganda sign the bill into law. The bill is one of the most extreme anti-LGBTQI plus laws in the world. If the AHA is signed into law and enacted, it would impinge upon universal human rights, jeopardize progress in the fight against HIV AIDS, deter tourism and invest in Uganda and damage Uganda's international reputation. Parliament passing it, it still has some process to go here. Um, we're, uh, we're certainly watching this real closely and uh, we would have to take a look at whether or not there might be um, uh, repercussions that we would have to take per per perhaps in an economic uh, way uh, should this law actually get passed uh, and enacted. That would be really unfortunate because uh, so much of the economic assistance that we provide Uganda is health assistance and largely through PEPFAR. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you can see a world in which you know, a law like this, should it be enacted, would not only, as, as Corrine rightly said, just be devastating to a whole community of people inside Uganda, but, uh, but if it were to have any kind of an effect uh, uh, on our economic assistance that would only make that worse. So we'll have to take a look. Uh, I want to begin by uh, taking a moment to condemn in the absolute strongest terms uh, the despicable law uh, put forward by the Ugandan government uh, discriminating against the 2SLGBTQI plus community. Um, this is something that Canada uh, totally and completely stands against. Uh, we will be looking at how we can uh, support the community in Uganda as we continue to stand for 2SLGBTQI plus rights uh, in Canada and around the world. And we call upon all leaders, uh, including uh, all leaders around the world, or particularly Commonwealth leaders, uh, to come out and clearly condemn uh, this uh, despicable piece of legislation. This is how far America and other Western countries can go to bully a sovereign country into yielding to their demonic agenda. Nobody concentrates so much on homosexuals. Nobody is hunting them. But because they come and want to force us to say homosexuality, oh yeah, that's how you get now a backlash. They are the ones who are provoking all this. The, our attitude on homosexuality is that these are deviants. They are deviants from the normal. There is the normal, there is the deviation from the normal. But you don't kill. The deviation from normal is also part of nature. You can get somebody born with six, inch, six fingers instead of five. You can't kill him. But then you don't go around and say, oh, this one, the deviation is the normal. It is the provocation by the Western countries. When a nation like the U.S. threatens to impose economic sanctions on another nation because of LGBTQ rights, it goes to show how Satan is using these ungodly elected officials, government appointees, and employees to intimidate and punish a country for making a law they believe is in the interest of their citizens. Let's talk more about that, uh, Roland. What are the dangers and ramifications of passing this bill, or rather, criminalizing LGBTQ relationships, both for the community and also for our country? One, uh, one uh, as I mentioned, discrimination is that once we, we, uh, we, we criminalize uh, uh, LGBTI uh, uh, activities, one, you find that uh, this community will not be free to go 
to look for services because already uh, you have already said that we don't identify you. And this includes health services. It includes uh, services such as, um, you know, you know, LGBTI community going uh, to hospitals for for treatment because one, uh, if uh, the treatment is related to, uh, for instance, uh, you know, issues that affect uh, their sexual health, then you find that uh, these persons may face uh, some kind of discrimination. Every person without God is in a dire mental condition. Doesn't mean their rational faculties are not functioning. But it does mean that they are in the kingdom of darkness, right? It does mean that they are under the power of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So we have to understand that anyone who is not a believer is operating in some sense with a demonic influence. It, it may be external, coming at them through the culture, but it, there's something in them, in their corruption in their fallenness, in their natural perversion that deceives them. The heart is, dis is desperately wicked, deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We want to make two crucial points here. First, we do not support taking someone's life because of gender identity. However, Uganda allotted the penalty as a deterrent to homosexuals who have sex with minors or a gay with HIV AIDS who have intercourse with another person. In the United States, if an adult engages in sexual activity with a minor or someone under the age of consent, they commit a felony, even if the minor indicated they agreed to have sex. Here are some examples of penalties for sleeping with a minor in the United States. The consequences of a conviction for a sex crime involving a minor include up to a lifetime prison sentence, years on probation once the prison term is finished, fines of tens of thousands of dollars, required registration as a sex offender, often for the rest of your life, civil penalties in some states. Isn't it hypocritical for the United States to condemn Uganda? At the core of it, it's really not about fighting for human rights. Instead, it's about exporting a sinful lifestyle to other countries with more pertinent issues to address. Secondly, the West should learn to respect other countries' sovereignty and their ability to make certain laws to protect their nations. What is your message to Western human rights groups, to President Obama, respect, to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender re people? Respect African societies and their values. If you don't agree, you just keep quiet. Let's manage our society the way we see. If we are wrong, we shall find out by ourselves. Just the way we don't interfere with yours. And here's the point we're trying to make. In the United States and many other European countries, polygamy or bigamy is a felony, meaning that you could be fined and even jailed for marrying someone else while still married. On the contrary, some African countries do not criminalize polygamy. The question then is, why are the United States and the West attacking a sovereign nation for making a law to ban homosexuality? This is hypocrisy and intimidation in their purest form. If you come to Germany, for instance, uh, which is one of the most liberal countries in the world, um, polygamy, polygamy is illegal in Germany. Uh, not only is it illegal, you could end up with a fine and a jail term of up to three years. One would think and expect that a country as liberal as Germany or any other country in Western Europe um, in promoting human rights would also have, you know, people practice whatever they want to practice. But the reality is that every country is entitled to enact legislation or laws that um, promotes moral values of that particular country. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. Unfortunately, the issue of homosexuality is gradually becoming a global issue. Some even go as far as calling it human rights issue, while others condescend so low as to equate rights with the black civil rights movement in America. So are there differences between uh, ethnicity and so-called sexual orientation? Absolutely there are. Ethnicity is innate uh, and unchangeable. So-called sexual orientation is not innate um, and it is changeable. 
Um, we know this. First Corinthians chapter six is two thousand year old evidence that people stop being gay. Um, so, so we know that it's neither innate nor is it unchangeable. So there are huge differences between the two. However, if all you're doing is uh, using the language of the culture and the idea of people as constituencies, um, then you end up right where we are and it's hard to stop that train. I think there are some things that we accepted philosophically in the civil rights movement that were not based in biblical truth. And those things are being applied in the gay rights movement the exact same way. And now we're calling them out. Um, for example, the idea of constituentizing people to, to, to create a word, <laughs> you know, seeing people as constituencies and seeing rights as rights for constituencies of people. Um, and, and this continued division of ourselves based on our con con uh, you know, constituencies and our so-called communities, this community, that community, the other community, and, and rights um, being sort of divvied up by community. Uh, that's problematic. Um, I think what we're seeing now is the homosexual community latching on to some of those very concepts these concepts, by the way, which are rooted and grounded in cultural Marxism, um, this, this, this was the goal of Gramscian Marxism, um, divide people up into constituencies. A and then the way you gain power is by making promises to and representing particular constituencies. Now, you never give them what you promise, but by creating this idea of constituencies and being the one who was the representative of the constituencies, you gain power and you keep your power to the degree that things don't get better for your constituency. So now what happens is even when gains are made, you have to downplay those and go looking for other things that are problems. Because again, that's the way you keep your power. Um, the homosexual community has latched onto that, has identified themselves as a constituency who is deserving of you know, uh, our, our attention uh, and, and our, our pity. Um, you know, they did this intentionally using the AIDS crisis. And the direct result is they now have achieved a one-to-one -one correlation uh, that we're finding it very hard to move away from. Moreover, just as the Western countries are pushing other countries to embrace homosexuality, the Pope seems to be pushing for it too. Not that we're surprised. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distinguamos pecado por delito. Pero también es pecado la falta de caridad con el prójimo. ¿Y vos cómo andás? La condena de la homosexualidad viene de, de, de lejos. Hoy día, por ejemplo, creo que los países que tienen condena legal son más de 50. No la nombran directamente, pero dicen eh, aquellos que tienen actitudes antinaturales. O sea, buscan decirlo de manera escondida. El, May the Lord Jesus help us to remain faithful, despite the glorification of sin all around us. Amen.
And here is your latest Africa news. I have raised this issue, and let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting. First of all, we don't have any such legislation here in Ghana. A bill has been proposed to the Parliament of Ghana, which has all kinds of ramifications, which is now being considered by the Parliament. It hasn't been passed, so the statement that there is legislation in Ghana to that effect is not accurate. The bill is going through the Parliament. It's going through the Parliament. The Attorney General has found it necessary to speak to the committee about it regarding the constitutionality or otherwise of several of its provisions, and the Parliament is dealing with it. At the end of the process, I will come in. But in the, in the meantime, the Parliament is dealing with it. And I have no doubt that the Parliament of Ghana will show, as it's done in the past, one, first of all, its sensitivity to human rights issues, as well as to the feelings of our population, and will come out with a responsible response to the, to, to the proposed. The legislation was a legislation that has been provided provi as a private member's bill. This is not an official legislation of the government, but it is one that has been uh, been mooted by a handful of private members. So we will see what the final outcome of it. But I'm, uh, my understanding from the recent discussion of the committee, the substantial elements of the bill have already been modified as a result of the intervention of the Attorney General. We will see what the final outcome will be. And that is the stage at which I will also have the opportunity to prevent. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It's the best way to show YouTube this is a good video and you will share it to more like-minded people like you. And remember, Africa is watching.